Hello everyone, welcome to another Lord of the Rings LCG video playthrough. In this video I'm going to be having a look at Beneath the Sands, which is the third adventure pack from the Haradrim cycle. Now I had a viewer comment from Aaron Staska who said, could we see some playthroughs of quests from the Haradrim cycle, some of the more recently released quests in the game. So I figured rather than go back to the beginning of the cycle, I would just pick up where we currently are in the release schedule which right now is Beneath the Sands, although this pack's been out for two months, and we actually get the Black Serpent pack tomorrow. Um, so this feels like a really good time to play this quest and hopefully get an interesting win. Um, I think this quest is somewhere in the middle in terms of difficulty. It's not the hardest quest around, but there are a few things about it that are tricky, um, and there are a lot of triggers to remember and effects to keep track of in this one. So that's part of the game, I think, is uh, trying to remember to do things in the right order. So the premise of this quest is that um, some people in our group have been seized by giant spiders and they've been taken away um, into this cave complex. And what we have to do is try to get to the bottom of the caves and rescue them from this horrible enemy, the Broodmother, who's holding them captive. So one of the interesting things in this quest is that we've got this objective in the staging area, starts the game in the staging area, and you can either be on track or you can be off track. And if you're off track, that represents um, a feeling of being lost in the cave complex, and you can actually place progress on the main quest while you're off track. Um, and there's a force effect there. At the end of the quest phase, place one resource here, then either return the topmost location in the encounter discard part of the staging area, or raise each player's threat by one for each resource here. So what you end up doing in this quest is kind of cycling locations, trying to find your companions as you explore the labyrinth, which is quite cool, quite a cool idea. Now, if you flip the quest card, uh, you can't actually place progress on the main quest while you're off track. So what you have to do is try to get back on track. And the way that works here is that there are locations which have a track keyword. Uh, here's a nasty one, so I'll just bring this one out. This one's got track four. So what would happen is while you're off track, uh, you would travel to this location and then you discard cards from the encounter deck equal to the track value. So discard one, two, three, four. And if one of those cards has on track in the lower right corner, what happens is you flip this one to on track and then you can actually place progress on the main quest now and try to uh, get to the end of the game. But the tricky part in this quest is that when you're on track, various effects um, get stronger. So there are enemies that get plus attack locations that get extra threat, so Hive Guardian there, while on track is in play, Hive Guardian gets plus two attack and minus five engagement costs. So that's an interesting feature of this quest, is that um, when you're kind of winning, you're also making things harder for yourself. Uh, this card has also got a forced effect. At the end of the quest phase, search the top three cards in the encounter deck for a card with on track in the lower right corner, add it to the staging area and discard the rest. If no cards enters play from this effect, flip this objective. So that can introduce some tension to the quest because if you don't reveal one with on track when you do that, as I've just done there, you have to actually flip and go back off track. The downside of that, of course, is that um, when you're trying to win and you need to be on track to win the quest, it can introduce some randomness and it can be a bit annoying if you go two or three turns without finding any on track cards from the encounter deck. Um, so that's sort of like the downside of the quest. On the upside, um, it is an interesting one because there's lots to keep track of. You've got some one or two nasty cards, one of which is that location, uh, the active location there, Pitch Black Tunnel, X Threat. X is the number of characters controlled by the first player, so that can really nail you um, if you don't uh, plan around that card when you play this quest. So in terms of the deck that I'm going to use to have a go at this one, um, it's a deck that I've used to beat it in solo and in multiplayer as well. Um, what the aim of this deck is, is to try to take advantage of this ally that came out in the Sands of Harad box, Vigilant Dunodan. As soon as I saw this guy, I thought, wow, this guy is ripe to be broken. There's got to be some way to beef this guy up so that he can just defend everything um, and just completely shut down all the enemies. So this is a really good quest to try that because there are lots of smaller enemies in this quest other than the boss, the Broodmother, um, but loads of annoying spiders and snakes and things. So he's a really good kind of candidate for this one if you just want to defend all those out. 
So that's kind of what the deck is aiming to do, is to get this guy into play, one copy of Vigilant Dunedan, and then boost his defense using Arwen. So you can quest with her, give him plus one defense, and in multiplayer he would also get Sentinel, which would be really helpful. So then he's three defense, not exhausting to defend while there's a side quest and the victory display, which there should be fairly quickly because I'm running Thorindir in this deck. And then I've also got Kurdan the Shipwright. So he uh, has two kind of roles in this deck. Um, it's mostly a Dunedin deck, and one thing Dunedain struggle with is early game questing, so he kind of covers that weakness with his four willpower. The other one is that we can run Naria, which allows us to ready two allies. So we can use Naria to ready Arwen and the Vigilant Dundan if we quest with him. So then if we have them out together with Naria, we can exhaust Arwen to get him to three defense, and then possibly quest with him as well, with one willpower, why not? And then in the combat phase, we can exhaust Naria and Kurdan to ready both of them, and they'll get plus one defense each. So he'll go up to four defense, not threat, and Arwen will go up to two. And then you could use her to defend a weak enemy, because she's got two defense, and there are lots of weak enemies in this quest. And when she exhausts again, you could give another defense to the Dunedan, and he'll be Sentinel as well in multiplayer. So a five defense Sentinel, uh, not exhausting ally just seems amazing to me. And we played it in a group uh, up against this quest, and he did a lot of work. I had tons of enemies engaged um, during that game. There are a couple of other cards in this deck that I think are quite fun with this combo. One is Silver Lamp, so we can engage loads of enemies. And because Kurdan will be ready at the beginning of the combat phase, because I've also got Light of Valinor, um, all the shadow cards are dealt face up. So then we can decide how we want to defend them. Do we want to use the Vigilant Dunedan? Do we want to use a Martheal to defend some of them? Or do we want to use the Guardian of Arnor, who's likely to be an absolute beefcake if you've got loads of enemies engaged? Um, the other cards which are sort of interesting uh, are the Road Goes Ever On, which is an attachment that is sort of a bit meh, but it's quite good in this quest because I'm running, uh, in this deck, sorry, because I'm running three copies of Master of the Forge so I can dig for it, and I've got three side quests I can fetch, Gather Information, uh, Double Back, and Keep Watch, which is uh, amazing with the Vigilant Dunedan as well because it's going to lower the attack of all the enemies. So I will say this isn't the best deck um, I've ever built. It's quite fragile. Sometimes it can completely wreck the quest. Other times it can sort of uh, fall over within the first couple of turns. But it is quite fun to get it all set up so that you've got kind of 10 enemies and this guy just defending them endlessly. Uh, really cool and interesting as well when you've got Silver Lamp in play and deciding how to discard Shadow Cards with Armored Destroyers on a Marthiel. So what I'm going to do now is cut this intro here and come back with a playthrough for you guys. Sometimes this quest can be interesting, sometimes it can be a bit lame and not much happens, so I would like to get an interesting playthrough. Um, so I'll see you there. So I've reset everything here, um, come back with a new window, a new hand. Looking at this one, it looks okay this hand. I don't particularly like seeing side quests at the beginning of the game. Um, I want to grab those with Thorindir and the cards on my deck, but I do like to see Arwen Master of the Forge and the Sylvan Refugee for a bit of early game questing power, especially the Refugee. So I think I'll keep this, I won't mulligan. I'm going to go into my deck and grab a side quest with Thrindir's setup action. I will take Gather Information, shuffle that one, and then we will follow the setup on quest card. Set Broodmother aside out of play, so I'll put her over here. Add the search objective to the staging area off track face up. So we're currently off track and we are trying to find our way through these caverns. And flip this one. When revealed, discard cards from the encounter deck until X locations are discarded, where X is the number of players. Add each location discarded by this effect to the staging area. So, Broodling, okay, block passage. Uh, two threat, six quest points, track two. While on track is in play, progress cannot be placed on locations in the staging area. No problem. Okay, so first turn, here we go. So we draw one, and then because we've got Kurdan the Shipwright, we draw an additional card at the beginning of the resource phase, and we have to choose and discard one of those cards. Hmm, I think probably... Yeah, Sarnford Sentry. Um, the Destroyer is really useful in this quest. 
I am running three copies of it, and that would be a useful ally to have, but it's a little early, so I'll probably discard her. Okay, so we'll play down Gather Information. I think we almost certainly want to play the Refugee, and probably nothing else. Um, I could do Daryl's Runes, but I don't really want to discard any of these cards, so I won't do that. I'm going to quest for eight, and I will quest on Gather Information. And we will reveal one card, Sand Viper. Okay, so four, so we've got six. And two progress on there. Now, end of the quest phase. Place a resource there, then we either return topmost location in the encounter discard part of the staging area or raise each player's threat by one for each resource here. I can't return a location because there aren't any, so I must raise my threat by one. And then the travel phase, we could go there. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to go there and not engage that sound viper just because you can't defend this. Um, it would be nice to get an enemy engaged though so I could play keep watch. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, might be the better thing to do. So we will travel to this one, track two, one, two. Uh, yep, on track. So we actually go on track now. We flip this one over. And then we'll engage the Sand Viper. And actually, when you travel to a location, that engages you anyway. So that's fine. Shadow card, I can't defend it. Until the end of the round, defending character cannot ready. There isn't a defending character, so I'm fairly sure that does nothing. And we'll put one damage onto Kurdan. And then I'll attack that back with three and do two wounds to it, because I probably do want to kill that later on. Okay, refresh. Draw two. I will discard Arlong, so she's already in my hand. Uh, having these is good, because once we start to draw kind of dead cards with Kurdan, uh, we can filter them with Daryl's runes. So here I'm going to do the Master of the Forge, and maybe we can find a Dunedin Remedy, possibly? That would be nice. Yep, okay, perfect. Shuffle that, and we'll play that one onto Kurdan. I'd like to find Light of Valinor as well, but I think we'll play Arwen next turn, so I wouldn't have played that anyway um, on him. And then we could do Keep Watch, um, but I think I'd probably rather play the Armored Destroyer onto a Martheal, just so that he can defend twice if necessary. Uh, he could also defend and attack. I know he can't defend the Sand Viper, but we may get another enemy this turn. So we'll quest for 8 again, up against nothing currently. And reveal one card. Spider Burrow. Three threat. Immune to player card effects. Forced. After Spider Burrow becomes the active location, flip the search objective to on track and add Broodmother to the staging area. Forced. When Spider Burrow leaves play as an explored location, set Broodmother aside out of play, unless the players are at stage 3B. So this is a really good piece of design um, from the design team, because this is a way to get back on track without having to kind of roll the dice of traveling to places and triggering the track keyword um, but it does have that cost of having to engage uh, the broodmother add her to the staging area but she engages you automatically um, so i'm not in a position to do that yet so i get, definitely can't do that anyway three threat so we get five progress so we didn't actually quite clear that one and then at the end of the quest phase search top three cards in the encounter deck for a card with on track in the lower right corner add it to the staging area and discard the rest if no card enters play from this effect, flip this objective. One, two, three. Uh, no, no on tracks, so that will flip. And I'm not too bothered about that right now because uh, I want to quest on gather information. Combat phase, give a shadow card to the Viper. It is undefended. Nothing, so it's just going to do one wound. And I'll probably do that to Thrindir now because I can move the remedy from Kurdan uh, the turn after next. And I could kill this. Um, I kind of want other enemies engage me than this one because it's just chipping away at me. Uh, but I won't have a tactics icon anymore. I think we'll kill it just because it's annoying. Much easier to deal with once you've got keep watch in the victory display because that gives all the non-unique enemies minus one attack. Uh, which is obviously really good in this deck as well because of the vision Dunedan combo. Anyway, refresh. Draw two cards. I know what's going to catch us up. Another copy of Arwen and the Vigilant Dunedan. Well, we'll get rid of her because uh, I've got her in hand. I'm going to play her now. One, two. So we'll get her onto the table. 
and then we will use Master of the Forge, look at the top five. Uh, yeah, we'll take that one because we can then look for our final side quest in the deck with that one. So I'll play that there. And then quests, I think we go all in here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up against three, reveal one. Hive Guardian, three threat, so we get four progress. One, two, three, four, perfect. So we clear, gather information, it goes to the victory display, Thuringia goes up to three willpower, and we can also trigger this one. Uh, when the attached quest is defeated, the first player chooses a player, as going to be me, funnily enough. That player searches his deck for a side quest, adds it to his hand, and shuffles his deck. So we're going to get two cards from that. I'm going to take double back from the Road Goes Ever On. And what do I want from Gather Information? Maybe, let's see, we've got Hive Guardian. It's kind of a tricky choice. There's nothing in particular I feel like I need right now. So maybe a Warden of Illuminus just to guarantee we've got some questing power going forward. That wouldn't be a bad choice. Naria, but having Master of the Forge out means I can search for any of the attachments in the deck. So I think it's better to take an ally. Maybe the Guardian of Arnor, uh, just because then I can take on these bigger enemies as and when they come into play. Uh, I think I'll take him, yeah. Even though we can't use him yet, he's going to be useful going forward. So I'll take that one, and then end of the quest phase, we place a resource token there. This location goes away, by the way. Then we return that location or raise our threat by one. Um... Let's see, progress cannot be placed on location in the staging area. I think we probably want to return it, but not engage the Hive Guardian. Just because he goes up to 5 attack and that's really difficult to deal with when you've only got a Marthiel in the early game. So I think we'll return that one instead of uh, going up any threat. And then we'll travel there on track 2. One, two. Okay, we're still off track, that's fine. Got side quests to do. And then I won't engage the Hive Guardian. I'll just refresh. Draw two cards. Vigilant Dunadan and Armored Destroyer. Uh, I'll probably get rid of the Destroyer because I've got three copies of that in my deck. And we'll use Master of the Forge now. Look at the top five. Uh, well, we'll take that. doesn't do anything. But what that does mean now is that I can play a Daron's Runes because I have a useless card in hand. Draw two. One, two. And I will discard that one. And then I'll probably play the other one because I've got two copies of Ervalandil. One, two. And yeah, we'll discard one of those. Nice. We'll play double back for free. And I'm kind of tempted on a Sylvan Refugee. I have a lot of expensive Dunedain and no enemies engaged, so I can't reduce their cost yet. Um, but if I have to discard an ally, then they would both leave play, which is not ideal. Um, maybe we just stick where we are, requesting for 11, and there's 6 in the staging area. The other card we need to be wary of is the X threat location, uh, which would add another 6 threat, so maybe I do need to play that one. It's not what I'd like, um, but I think we have to until we get some smaller enemies. This quest will all these two, four, six, nine, thirteen. Reveal one. Craft remedy, okay. Treat the printed text box of each damage character as if it were blank except for traits. And by the way, I'm questing on double back here. Uh, response. When the stage is defeated, heal one damage from each character in play. Alright, so Thorindir is blank, so that means I lose one willpower. If Opt's going to let me. And we get six progress. So we clear the block passage exactly. And then we add a token there. And we're probably going to. Yeah, we probably have to return that one. I really don't want to engage this guy. Let's return it and travel there. And we'll see what happens. So travel there, track two, one, two. Okay, we're back on track now. Got rid of Lost Underground. So flip this one, 
Okay, then engage. I I don't want to engage him. He's minus five engagement costs, but I can wait to deal with that. So I think I'm just going to refresh and go to the next turn. Noria and Daron's runes. Um, oh yeah, I don't really want to discard Noria. Maybe we go Daron's runes. Let's see. Do we actually want to play Nara yet? Yeah. Readying two allies probably isn't going to help us that much right now. Uh, there is another copy of it in the deck. So let's go. Hmm. Yeah, let's discard that. Is that crazy? I think that might be crazy. Yeah, let's get rid of Downs Runes. Okay, so we're going to move that one to Thurindir so that he's healed. So he'll go back up to three willpower. And I need to see some smaller enemies. That's the trouble. Go top five, Silver Lamp. We'll grab that one. I guess this is the problem. If you don't get enemies with a Dunedain deck, you're stuck um, with low numbers. All right, so questing, we will go... Maybe I want to play this guy, thinking about it. He's going to be coming down for five attack this turn if I don't go off track. Uh, so if I play him, he will be defending for two, so I actually won't survive it. But a Marthiol is very dodgy. I can use Armin's response on him, take him up to four, or I could take this guy up to three. Uh, let's use him. Yeah, let's keep the resources. So we'll quest for 2, 4, 6, 10, 13 again. And I give plus 1 defense to a Marthiel to make him 4. Reveal 1, Sand Viper for 4, so we're getting 3 progress. 1, 2, 3, not quite enough to clear that. Uh, end of the quest phase, search top 3 cards, the encounter deck for a card with on track in the lower right corner, add it to the stage area and discard the rest. 1, 2, 3. Yep, so we're going off track. That's lucky. That means that Hive Guardian won't engage me. Um, but I am going to bring down the... Hmm, maybe I do want to engage him now. Three attack, one enemy in play it means I could get one of these guys down. Uh, yeah, let's take him and leave this Viper up there. Shadow card for him. So he's attacking for three. Defend with a Martial. Plus one, if it destroys a character, raise your threat by one. It's not going to destroy a character. Sadly, he's now damaged, which means he's also blank. Um, but we can ready him and just do an attack, do one wound to it, a refresh. Okay, draw two. Come on. Uh, nope. Sylvan Refugee. Oof. Um, a Warden or a Sylvan Refugee. That would give me some questing power now. Whereas the Warden is not helping that much at the moment. So I think that's going to have to be the Warden. Although if I have to lose a character, I'll lose all three refugees. Let's lose a refugee. Okay, look at the top five. And we'll take the Remedy. And then we'll play that onto a Martheal. So a heal for one. And I really want to get something into play. Um, if I play that, I could get a Guardian of Honor down, or I could just play a Vigilant Dunedan for four, hard casting him. Uh, I'm going to have two enemies on me this turn, though. Let's get this down. Air of Orlando for two. And we'll probably do... I need to find Light of Valinor, really. But we'll do that for two green resources, lower resources. And then we will do Erevalandil 1 2 and play Guardian of Arnor. So he's defending for 2 right now. And then questing, we're going to go on to. Yeah, let's try double back. Maybe Craft Remedy. We definitely want to get rid of that. So quest for 2, 4, 6, 9, 13 again. And we can reveal 1. So we've got 10. So we get three progress. One, two, three. Good. No progress on the side quest though. 
we're off track, so we place one resource token, and then we can either return the topmost location or raise our threat by one. I'm going to raise my threat by one because I want to travel there. He's going to engage me immediately. Uh, so I shuffle the encounter discard part into the encounter deck and discard cards from the top until a creature enemy is discarded. Add the discarded enemy to the staging area. Shuffle it in. One, two, okay, brutaling, nice, weak enemy. And then we also track three. Uh, so we do one, two, three. Yep, on track. So we're back on track. So we flip this one. Lots of flipping this. And then this one is going to engage me, no problem. Combat phase, shadow cards for these. Um, we're a little short on defenders now. I have to take this undefended, nothing I can do about it. If on track is in play, put Spider Broodling into play, engage with you, and deal it a shadow card. All right, so now the enemies are coming. Uh, that does one wound. We'll probably do that to Kurdan, because um, I'm less bothered about him being blank. Uh, so we'll do that to him. And then I think this guy, oh, he's attacking for five now, but our Guardian of Arno has suddenly gone up to five as well. So we'll defend that with him. Plus one, so he's going to take a wound. Oof. Um, that's right, so his defense would actually go down. If he's blank, his defense would go down after the attack resolves, so I'm pretty sure he would just take one wound from that. And then I can defend this one with a Mothule. Nothing. Ready him and discard the shadow card from that one and defend it. Nice. All right, we've got some enemies in play now. So the deck's functioning a little bit more nicely. And let's dig for Light of Valinor. That's really the card I want to see right now. Uh, didn't find it there. Silver lamp out there, though. Shuffle that. And we can play a free ally now. I think... I'm going to heed the dream and try to find um, Light of Valinor again. Top, top five? Yeah, I found it. Good. Shuffle that. We'll play that one onto Kurdan. Hold one. And then next time we can get the silver lamp down. And the Marthiel should get an extra resource. So we will... Let's see. What do we need badly? We probably want to shore up our defense and then play the quester. Um, having said that, this guy is currently blank, so it might be a good idea to try to quest through Craft Remedy this turn. It'd be nice to get the Vigilant Dunedan in, is all. I think we probably do that. I think we will go for Erevalando and play a Warden of Anuminus. He's going to quest for four. And that's all we'll do. I'd really like to get him down, but I just don't have enough resources. So quest phase, we'll do four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fourteen, because he doesn't exhaust now. Seventeen. Questing on Craft Remedy. And we're up against three. Bill one. Grab by spiders, surge doom one. Attached to the main quest, limit one per quest, counts as a condition attachment with the text forced. After the surge objective is flipped to off track, each player discards an ally he controls. Then discard grab by spiders. Okay, that goes there. And doomed one, and it's going to surge into a hive guardian, so it's adding three. So we get 11 progress, three, and eight on there that would be. So we do complete that one. Uh, we're going to heal one damage from each character in play. Thurindir will go up a willpower. We can heal our Guardian of Arnor and Kurdan for one. And this one goes away. And then end of the quest phase, search top three cards of the encounter deck for a card with on track. One, two, three. We are still on track, so we can choose which one we want to add to the staging area. Probably block passage. Uh, Having another creature right now would be probably untenable. So let's take this. And we're going to travel to somewhere. We'll travel to that one. But you don't resolve the track keyword while you're on track. So that doesn't do anything. And then encounter phase. I can't stop this guy from engaging because he has minus five engagement cost. So shadow cards. Now then, we want to defend these two. And I want to defend that with Guardian of Arnor. He is defending for six now. So 
So I'm pretty sure um, there's nothing that can kill him. Even if it gets plus two attack, he would go to seven, so he still survives. So let's defend the first one with him. Nothing. This is undefended. I can't do anything about it. If on tracks in play, put Spider Broodling into play, engage with you, and deal a shadow card. Uh oh, alright. Uh, that's undefended for one, so I'll put that on Thurindir. And then probably, let's see, I want to discard some of these shadow cards. I'm going to defend this one with a Marthiol. Nothing. Ready him, and I will discard the shadow card from this guy. And then I'll defend the next by the Broodling with a Marthiol. Until the end of the round, defending character cannot ready. That's annoying. Uh, so no damage, though. And now I'm going to use Naria with Kurdan to ready two allies. We'll ready Garnier of Arnor and Warden of Inumas, plus one defense each. So I can use him to defend the other Hive Guardian and take no damage, because he's defending for seven. And then I can defend this last Broodling with the Warden of Anuminous. Discard an attachment you control. Probably the Doondane Remedy, I think. Uh, I need all the others. Okay. Job done. Refresh. Unfortunately, a Marthial stays exhausted. Get some extra resource. Draw another card for Kurdan, and I'll discard the Rodeo's Ever On. Now we can get the Vigilant Doom down into play, and not a moment too soon, I have to say, because we've got all the enemies engaged with us now. And we'll play Silver Lamp onto Kurdan. This is where it gets fun, because now all the Shadow cards are going to be face up. And I'm going to play this one onto a Marthial. Unfortunately, he's exhausted, so I won't get to use it this turn. Um, but I need to get it out there. And I think we'll probably play Keep Watch. It might have been better to play the Bowman uh, rather than that Destroyer, thinking about it. Let's play Keep Watch, and I think I'll play the Bowman and take back the Destroyer, just because that doesn't do anything this turn. So we'll play him instead, and then I can kill a couple of these Hive Guardians, hopefully. Okay, questing. This guy's now questing for six. So I think here we'll probably quest on Keep Watch and try to uh, blow that away. And then quest on that one next turn, and then actually start to make some progress on the quest. Hopefully. <laughs> so quest for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen, twenty. And we're up against three. Surely there's nothing that can stop us. Maybe the extra location, which would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, which would take us to fourteen. So we'd still get six progress. Uh, I think that's fine. Reveal one. Spider Broodling, it's getting Surge because we're on track. Giant Scorpion, so that added four. So we're getting seven, so we get 13 progress. Uh, six on there, and seven on Keep Watch, so that gets completed. Now all the enemies are minus one attack. He's five willpower. That one is cleared, and then end of the quest phase, search top three cards in the encounter deck for a card with on track. One, two, three. Add it to the staging area. Pitch Black Tunnel, no thank you. We'll take the block passage. Both of those get discarded, that's really lucky. And then I think we probably travel there, just to get it out of the staging area. And now we have to engage both of these enemies, so we'll make some room here. This is going to be a funny combat phase, so shadow cards for all of them. And have a look at them with the silver lamp. Okay, exhaust the character, and we're looking for the bad ones figure out what we're going to do. It's going to make an additional attack. That's pretty nasty. Plus one. Defending catch count ready. That's not going to be a problem. Plus two attack. So these are all minus one now. Um, so what that means is I can defend with the Dunadan, who's defending for three, by the way, because I always use Arlen's uh, response on him now, once he's in play. And Amarthiel doesn't get that anymore, unless he needs it. Uh, this guy, I'm going to take those tokens off, and I'll just count it manually. So we can use him to defend this one. Doesn't do anything because he's ready. Uh, this one, plus two attack. So won't do any damage to the Dunedan because he's attacking for one, plus two, three. Nothing here, so that one's cleared. That one doesn't do anything. This one will be undefended. Exhausted character you control. Master of the Forge. And it doesn't do any damage now because it's no attack. Uh, so we've got three left, plus one. So that will be three, so the Dunedan can defend that, no problem. 
And then this one will be attacking for five. So I'll defend that one with Guardian of Arnor. He's defending for nine, which is crazy. No damage. And I can... Let's see, he's going to make an additional attack. So we want to ready the Guardian of Arnor. And probably another ally that we don't care about, which we could chump with. So probably the refugee, because if anybody else leaves play, we have to discard both of them. Uh, so we we'll defend. Let's see, we we'll defend that one with Guardian of Arnor. And it's going to make an additional attack. So Shadow Card does not face up, unfortunately. I think we probably kill the refugee. It doesn't really matter. Yep, so she's going to die and she's going to take the other one with her. Okay, then attacking back. Uh, we will do probably three on this one. So we'll do one wound to that. And then we can use our bowman, who's attacking for, what, nine? To completely destroy that Hive Guardian. No problem. And then refresh, and we get our Marthial back now, which is good. Extra card with Kurdan. Discard Air of Alandil. So now we've kind of got this on lockdown, I think. It's probably not going to pose too much of a threat of us from this point on, so really we just want to finish it off. Uh, this is what Dunedain decks are like, really. It's very turtly in the early game. Once you get all these allies into play, um, quests generally can't stand up to what the deck can do. Uh, so I've played that Warden of Anuminus for free there. I'm going to play Heed the Dream and look at the top five, see if I can find another questing character. Uh, yeah, Warden of Anuminus, let's take him. I can't play him this turn, but that's fine. Shuffle that. And Marthiel should have an extra resource for two. Now I'll play the Armored Destroy onto him. So you can defend twice. And um, we'll just go to the quest phase. These guys are questing for eight apiece. Uh, so if we smash double back, then we can just go on and smash the rest of the quest, hopefully. So we'll quest for 16 with those two, which is insane. Um, 18, 22, 27. And we've got three side quests, so yeah, he's five. 16, 20, 25, 27. Yeah, that looks good. Reveal one. Okay, Lost Underground, another side quest. When revealed, flip the search objective to off track. While Lost Underground is in play, the search objective cannot flip. Do not resolve the track keyword. Response, when this stage is defeated, flip the search objective to on track and ignore its forced effects until the end of the phase. All right, that's gonna stop us from making any progress. So now we need to complete two side quests. Uh, I think it's safe to say we quested successfully there. We are up against three, so we're getting 24 progress. We absolutely destroy that block passage, smash the walls down, and clear double back as well. So we can lower our threat by five, go down to 36. That will see us through, and Thorinda goes up to six. Combat phase, shadow cards. Uh, I'm not going to travel there, by the way, in the trial phase. Um, I have to do that one though, I just realized. So I place a resource token there, and then I'll return the block passage to the staging area. And I won't travel there because I can't flip it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So these are all face up. Right then, if this deals damage, it will not deal damage, so that's going to be undefended. It doesn't do anything. No wounds. Uh, if on tracks in play, that's going to make an additional attack. It is not in play, so we can defend that one with the Dunedan because he's only attacking for three. So no damage from him. I'll move him over a bit. This one, no damage. If on tracks in play, nope. Attacking enemy plus one, nope. Until the end of the round, defending counter, nope. <laughs> nope, didn't do anything. And then I'll use my Bowman and kill this Hive Guardian. He's attacking for one, uh, seven, eight. Yeah, so he dies. Okay, I'm happy with that. Refresh. Now let's smash this side quest and get it over with. Discard Light of Valinor. We will play Erevalandil, another Warden of Anuminus. So now these guys are questing for six. Uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I miscounted those last turn. Um, but it doesn't matter. I quested for so much, it wouldn't have made any difference. So go to quest phase. We'll do six, 12, 20, uh, sorry, 14, 18, 24, 30. I think that's right. Double check that because I did the math a bit strange there. 10, 12, and three of those is 30. Yeah. Up against five. Hmm. And we're going to quest on Lost Underground. Whoops, pressed the wrong button. Apologies. Uh, just fix that. It's a bit annoying. Uh, he doesn't really. Okay. Nest of Vermin for three. 
22 progress. Wow. So we clear lost underground. Thorinder gives up to 7 willpower. And we get to flip this one and ignore its forced effect until the end of the phase. That's fine. Travel phase. We could probably do that one, I think. Uh, let's go there just to get that one out of there. We don't do track because we're on track. Shadow cards face up because of Kurdan. That does nothing undefended. Um, we are on track, so that's going to make an additional attack. We'll defend it with the Dunadan. He's defending for three. Gets another shadow card face up because we're still ready. Uh, Silver Lamp character is still ready. Plus one, so he's going up to four. So and let's move on for a second. Yep, defending character count ready, no problem. Uh, actually, he's only attacking for two, isn't he, because of Keep Watch, so I'll just do it down that one, no problem. Exhausted character you control, Master of the Forge is my exhaustion muppet. Uh, we do that one. Ah, discard an ally controls. I forgot about that one. Uh, so I'll discard an ally now. I will discard the Master of the Forge and I'll exhaust the Guardian of Honor instead for that shadow effect. Uh, so this one is also defended by the Dunadan. Okay. Then we also discard Grab by Spiders. That's all done. Yep. Refresh. It's pretty easy to miss those effects when you are kind of cruising through like that. Um, so I draw another card. Uh, we don't need a second Guardian of Arnor. Oh, they're requesting for so much. We probably don't need Gamber again either, really. Um, but we'll play him instead. One, two, get him down. Oops. And we'll get another Vigilant Duna down to play. Okay. And I may as well move the Remedy to Thurindir. Heal him. Right, let's smash this now. Absolutely destroy it. So these guys are questing for six. We'll do two, nine, thirteen. Nineteen, twenty-five, thirty-one. Nothing can stand up to that, surely. Cobweb Cavern, four threat, four, seven, ten. Twenty-one progress. Absolutely destroyed that. Go to the next phase. When revealed, flip the search objective to off track. Okay. Shuffle the encounter discard part into the encounter deck and discard cards from the top until X enemies are discarded, where X is the number of players. Add each enemy discarded by this effect to the staging area. All right. So shuffle that in and find an enemy. Sand Viper. Okay. No problem. Flip that one over. While on track is in play, encounter card effects cannot be cancelled. Well, I'm not running any cancels anyway, so it doesn't affect me. Uh, we're going to travel to Nest of Vermin. So I have to do that again, shuffle and get an enemy. But again, I don't really care about enemies at this point because the Vigilant Dunedal is doing so much work for us. Uh, so he's added to the staging area. Then we track three, one, two, three. Nope, we have to stay off track, that's annoying. So end of the quest phase as well. Actually, I should have done that. And I'll raise my threat by one uh, because I've gone ahead now. This would engage me as soon as I travel there, and I have to engage this guy. I don't have to, but I may as well. Shadow cards. Uh, flip them. Okay, nothing. Discard an attachment you control. We'll get rid of that one. Yep, yeah, so this is undefended. Undefended. We will defend one of the weaker ones. This one with a Marthial. Shadow effect doesn't do a thing. Ready him, discard that one. And then we just block that with the Dunadan. And then we can block all of the others with the Dunadan, no problem. And then I want to kill this Hive Guardian. So we'll murder him. And we'll leave the others engaged. Uh, we could actually kill a few Broodlings just to get more on track cards into the encounter deck, but it's not going to cycle for a while. So we can wait to do that. So now we refresh. Draw two. I'll discard an aria. We don't need it. Uh, I think we don't play anything. Just quest for a lot. So these guys are now seven apiece. Uh, we just want to try to... We can't actually get through it, so I'll probably travel there this turn um, just so we can get on track. So do seven, fourteen, sixteen, twenty, twenty-seven. Let's put him in for good measure. Thirty-four. Ridiculous. Real one, 
block passage, no problem, four, six, nine. So we clear this one, um, but we don't make any progress there. Plus one, and we'll return that location to the staging area. And then we're gonna travel to the spider burrow. So we flip this to on track now, and we add the brood mother to the staging area. Oops, there we go. So cannot have attachments, cannot take damage. Brood mother engages the first player, put her there. Forced at the end of the round, search the encounter deck and discard path for a spider broodling and add it to the staging area if able. Shuffle the encounter deck. All right. So she's six attack because she's not non-unique. So she doesn't get uh, debuffed by keep watch. But her shadow card will be face up. So we can decide what to do with it. Discard an attachment you control. All right. So I'm going to defend something else. Uh, that one's going to be undefended. No damage. If on tracks in play, that's going to make an additional attack. It's undefended, no damage, no shadow card for it. Exhaust a character you control. Okay, we'll move on for a second. Plus two attack for him. Um, so he'll be four. He'll be two. So I think we probably defend this one with a Martheor. Ready him and discard the block passage from Broodmother. Then we'll defend the Broodmother with Guardian of Arnor, that's done. This one, exhaust the character you control. We probably exhaust Gambor again, I think. Uh, these ones don't do anything, so yeah, we'll do that. Undefended, no damage, exhaust him. And then this one is coming in for four. So I think we could block that with the Dunedan and maybe take a wound. Uh, actually, we'll block it with a Martheor and we'll take one wound from that. And then we can ready him and discard that one, I guess. And then we just block all those through with the Doondan, no problem. So we can't do any damage to the Broodmother. So we'll probably leave her in play. Uh, I think we, we're we not going to cycle the deck this turn, we'll do it next turn. So maybe we don't kill anything. We'll probably just kill one and then we'll just bring it straight back with the Broodmother's effect. And we have to. Uh, shuffle the encounter deck as well. Okay, refresh. Almost through the entire deck now. Draw another one. Uh, yeah, do we need two bowmen? I think we're questing for loads. Another bowman might be more useful. So we'll get rid of her. Erevalandil, play the bowman for free. And we want to smash this part of the quest now. So we're going to quest for as much as we can. We can quest for 14, 21 with those guys alone. 25, 32, 34. I don't think there's anything that can stop that. That's four threat. So we've got two, six, nine, ten. Uh, if we've got the X threat location, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, which takes the twenty-three, so we'd still get eleven, so we'd still beat it. So reveal one. In enemy territory, surge. Each player cannot have more than five cards in his hand. If you have more than five, immediately choose and discard cards from your hand until you have only five. Response, when this stage is defeated, each player draws a card. Sure. Surge, grab by spiders. Surge, doomed one. When revealed, attach to the main quest. Limit one per quest. Counts as a, a condition attachment with the text. Forced, after the search objective is flipped to off track, each player discards an ally he controls, then discard grab by spiders. I'll try not to forget that one this time. So that added no threat. So we'll do another card from the surge. Ah, when revealed, either flip the search objective to off track or deal one damage to each questing character. I think we take the damage uh, just because we want to try to finish the quest now. So these guys are all going to take a wound. I do have a healer in the deck somewhere, so hopefully we'll see him. He's going to take a wound and that one as well. Uh, but it means we stay on track. So we get 24 progress by my last calculation. Uh, double check, 2, 6, 9, 10. Yeah absolutely destroyed that part of the quest. Uh, so we go straight to this part and we go to the next stage. When revealed the first player adds Broodmother to the staging area, each other player reveals an encounter card, flip the search objective to off track. So she would go there but she engages the first player anyway passively so there's no point in actually doing that. So we go off track. Okay, Spider's Hive. While there are at least five progress tokens on this stage, Broodmother loses a text, cannot take damage. Forced, after the search objective is flipped to off track, remove all progress tokens from this stage. This stage cannot be defeated while Broodmother is in play. 
If the players defeat this stage, they win the game. So what we need to do is stay on track, put five on there, and then make sure we don't go off track, and then kill the broodmother. So that got flipped as well, so now we have to discard an ally. Uh, I think we'll probably discard Gamburi Gan. He's the one we need the least here, really, requesting for so much with the wardens. It doesn't really matter, so he's going to leave play. All right, let's try to get back on track. So let's go to the Nest of Vermin, and we'll shuffle the Encounter Discard Bob back in. And we discard cards until the creature is discarded. There it is. And then we track three. One, two, three. Okay, good, we're on track. So now it's going to go away. So we can flip back to there. And now both of these are going to engage. Can't stop it. Shadow cards. Dealt face up. Now we get to decide how to deal with them all. Okay, nothing. Plus two. So that's quite nasty, actually, on that one and that one. That's two damage and I can't defend it. Uh, you never know when it's over, do you? Until it's over. Okay, it's going to make an additional attack, no problem. Exhausted character control. Mm, no biggie. It's going to make an additional attack. So what we'll do is we'll defend these with our three defense Dunadan. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Makes an additional attack. Gets a face-up shadow card. Doesn't do anything. And this one I'll probably keep from Marthior. Uh, so we'll defend that one. Not going to do any damage. Ready him. And we'll discard this shadow card. And then we'll probably go defend this one. So it's going to make another attack, which is fine, because the shadow card will be face up. Um, then we'll ready him. That means I have to discard an attachment now. And it has to be from another enemy, doesn't it? Yeah, so we'll get rid of that one. I can take both of these undefended for no damage. Um, let's move the remedy around because we'll probably discard that. Uh, although I do have another Light of Valinor, so it makes more sense to discard that one. Move that one there. Heal. Move that one there. Heal. Uh, so we'll defend that one with the Dunadan. Discard an attachment. Let's get rid of Light of Valinor. It's fine. And then this one, Exhausted Character Control. Let's defend Broodmother first with Guardian of Arnor. Massive defense on him. He's defending for, what, nine right now? Ten, even? It's crazy. Uh, so no damage. And then we just defend this uh, with the Dunadan. Exhausted character control. We can exhaust the other one. No problem. And now we can attack back. Uh, we can't do any damage to the brood mother. Uh, brood mother, sorry. So we'll kill a couple of broodlings um, just to get these off of us. Because um, she's going to make them cycle. So we'll do that. And then, end of the round, she brings one back to the staging area, and we shuffle the encounter deck. Okay, refresh. Hopefully we finish it this turn. Draw two. I'm going to discard one of them, funnily enough. Um, I'm not sure what else is left in the deck, so I'm not going to do anything there. I'm just going to play Light of Valinor onto Kurdan for one. Give him Arthur's extra resource and call that done. And then questing. We've got these guys down to six. Uh, so we'll probably just try to quest on the Spider's Hive, get five on it, and then stay on track. Fingers crossed. Uh, so we'll do two, six, thirteen, nineteen, twenty-five. And uh, let's play it safe in case we get that location. Thirty-one. Uh, I think I forgot to do that one. Uh, no, I flipped it, didn't I, last turn? So that doesn't do anything. So reveal one card. Cobb of Karen, so another four. We've got four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we make twenty progress. One, two, three. One, three, four, five. All right. That goes away. And now we have to try and stay on track. One, two, three. Yeah, we did it. Good. So that goes to the staging area. Um, we can travel there. So we will get another enemy. Let's make it interesting. Shuffle there. Discard. Ooh, nasty one. Okay, uh, that's going to engage. Let's put him here. This going to engage. And then combat phase, deal out shadow cards. Uh, why have I got a cavern there? Pick the wrong card. Apologies. There we go. And then face up from the silver lamp. Okay, that does nothing. Exhausted character control. Uh, 
because that's another enemy. I can't ready. So this guy's attacking for five. So let's defend the Broodmother with him first. Nothing. And we'll probably need to get rid of these exhaustion effects. So we don't want that one either. We'll defend that first Scorpion with a Marthiol and we'll ready him and get rid of... Uh, let's see. That one. And then we want to see what the extra... Uh, there's one of them's getting extra attack, I thought. No, this one. Put it into play engage with him, do it a shadow card. So he is attacking for four. So I could defend that with the Dunadan and he would take one wound, which is not a big deal really. Uh, on track is in play, so he's going to get a shadow card. Plus one. This one is going to be undefended for one damage. It's fine. That's undefended, no damage. I've defended that one with him, so that's fine. That one has been defended by him. Until then, random defending counter count ready. It doesn't affect him. Plus one doesn't affect the Dunedan. Yep, and plus one. Job done. And then all we need to do now is pile in on the Broodmother because she's lost the text, cannot take damage. Uh, so we will do an attack with our bowmen. They're each attacking for 10. So that's 20. So we've absolutely slaughtered the Broodmother. One arrow in each eye. She's probably got more than two eyes, but can't really tell from that picture. She's dead either way. Good game to her. Uh, because they are attacking for a ton. And she only needs 16 to kill her. So there we go. That's Beneath the Sands toppled. Um, I think everything went my way more or less there. Um, it was a bit tricky in the early game with the uh, side quests and trying to quest through. Um, but once we got these guys on the table and this bunch of enemies, there was nothing it could do to stop that deck. So I really like this guy. It's fun. As I said though at the beginning, it's kind of fragile. This is really the only quest where this is reliable, I've found. Some other quests that are swarmy, you can use this guy um, somewhat reliably. I think in multiplayer it's going to be more effective because you've got more breathing room more people to pick up your early game slack and obviously the deck the deck sorry is quite janky with the various bits and pieces going on it's probably easily disrupted um, when you've got things that discard attachments and so on but i have to say from kind of like the player driver perspective it's really fun to just shut down an encounter deck like that and figure out what to do in the combat phase with silver lamp really cool card really difficult to use that card um in terms of deck building, I mean, um, Seastan made a good deck with it, uh, the Rohan Meet Dunedain deck, and it's really fun there as well because you get to pick how to defend everything. Same thing here. So, overall, I do like Beneath the Sands. That made it look a bit easy, but as I said, things went my way. I've had playthroughs where um, the quest can take you apart in the early game. Um, overall, I do like this quest. Uh, it's probably in the middle. Not the hardest quest, as I said at the beginning, not the easiest but still one I like to play, and I've played it several times now, and it's always been interesting every time. So do let me know what you think about Beneath the Sands, whether or not you enjoyed the quest when you played it, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about the Vigilant Dunadan and what kind of decks he might fit into. Um, I know the Chad from Cardboard of the Rings podcast put up a really nice Vigilant Dunadan deck using Denethor and Eowyn. It's more of a Gondor Swarm deck, but it uses him and Thrindir can grab you keep watch that's got a native tactics icon with tactics aon so you can get keep watch down much earlier on it took me a really long time to clear out all of these side quests so i feel like three side quests plus the three in the um encounter deck itself can turn the game into a bit of a slog but on the plus side it does make thurinda an absolute questing beast one other thing we got lucky with this game, I think, is that we avoided the location that has X threat. So that one, as I said earlier, if it appears when you're not ready for it, it can really get you and it can cause some serious location lock. Interestingly, one character that's really good in this quest is Ally Bomber, who you can exhaust to cancel out the threat of a location. If it's an underground location, he'll just make the threat of the location zero. Um, it's probably the only quest where he's amazing, to be honest, because you've got this, which can sometimes be 15 threat. Uh, so you might want to look into him as well if you're building a deck to take on this quest. 
So there we go, I hope you enjoyed the video. As I said earlier, do leave me comments, I do appreciate and enjoy reading all the comments you leave me, I always read them and try to respond to them all. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully we'll have a card review video up very soon, and I'll be back to play The Black Serpent once it's released. Bye for now.